5 de mayo. Yo, yo, yeah, uh, my shorty bad like Shakira. Oh, I told her look in the mirror. Yo, don't need a license to carry. I do not let them sit near. She got a heart that's so pure. Better hope nothing occur. Better hope nothing occur. <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody. Once again, this is NFL Flag Talk, the best podcast around, where we talk about all the topics in regards to NFL Flag. We've talked about tournaments. We've talked about coaching. We've talked about refereeing. But today is a special day. We have some of our former players here who've gone on to do well in high school, now playing in college football. So, by the way, I'm Eric Cooper, my partner over there. Rashad Colvin. Right. And let's introduce our special guest. First, we have Eric Benson right over here. Eric Benson, what's up? Bro? <laughs> and we have Gabe Dunlap. I'm Gabe Dunlap. All right, they're gonna hear, you're gonna hear all about their stories and what they've gone through in high school and our league and things like that. And we'll start with you. Ben. Yep. So, I, so I'm Eric Benson Jr. So I I played in the the flat NFL flag league. Uh, I never played tackle football before in my life. That was probably my first time playing football. Is the NFL flag league because my dad wanted to save my body for. I wish I still would have played midget league, but. Uh, yeah, I never got a chance to do that, but play NFL Flag League, had much success in that league, and then transitioned in high school to play uh, 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 football there at Central Catholic. Um, they had a good experience there, ups and downs there, but uh, end result, two-time championship uh, player as a team there. Transitioning, I'm at Shippensburg University now playing still. So, yeah, so football's been a part of my life ever since I was eight. Uh, also, I'm um, going to Shippensburg University. Uh, my management, uh, my uh, major is management, and also want to get a, a master's in marketing. Nice. And then transition and to do real estate in the future. Awesome. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, I, I have a plan for what I want to do in the future. Still, that's football dope. is definitely in the plan. For sure. For sure. So yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, welcome. Yeah, All right. Yeah. So uh, for me, uh, I started playing midgets when I was four. And then right around third grade, uh, I had maybe a concussion. It wasn't a concussion. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. So my parents said, uh, let's try and push you out of tackle for a little bit until your body develops more. Uh, you're a little stronger so you can protect yourself better. So I came over to the NFL Flag League, played both spring and fall there, mainly at quarterback with also playing defensive back. Then uh, transitioned into high school ball and played quarterback for uh, Penn Trafford. I was strictly a quarterback, which was really awesome, but it also limited uh, the recru recruiting a lot. Mm -hmm. So uh, then going into college, I had a decision to make. Do I want to try and play quarterback, or do I just want to try and get on the field as quickly as I can? Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I chose Gro uh, Grove City College. They gave me the opportunity to do both football and track there. Nice. So that's been an awesome experience. I was able to come in and start at uh, corner as well as kick returner, punt returner nice. my freshman year continue to play there until I was injured my junior year so I missed that season but this year uh, came back corner punt returner kick returner and we were fortunate enough to make it to the top t uh, top 16 teams in D3 and only lost the national championships by one point on, wow. a, on a missed field goal so wow, what a story <laughs> so it was pretty awesome but yeah awesome yeah awesome. I'm majoring in uh, business there plan on graduating in the spring okay just getting out uh Getting a job and hopefully coaching some like some ath uh, athletic event for sure football track doesn't matter for sure nice nice all right, all right. so you want to ask Gabe the same question then yeah uh, so Gabe tell, me, tell us about some of your memories or your best highlight of being in the part of our the Pittsburgh NFL flag league yeah unfortunately uh, the Lions the team I played for was never able to win a championship <laughs> <laughs> some questionable calls against the Steelers <laughs> the one year. But uh, I would just say growing up and just playing with all these, uh, all the kids, and then just forming the elite team, that first experience down in Virginia, mm -hmm. going down and just being able to be on a team with everyone rather than continuously competing against them. And, you know, just, like, the relationships that you built, like, I mean, we're still all around. I know Josh always plays in the alumni game. Hopefully a lot more of us are allowed to start playing <laughs> For sure. uh, now that we're out of college football. But, like, just those relationships and – the ability to go compete against other people mm -hmm. who also play at a really high level. 
Awesome. awesome. I love that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, so, it's so, nice. so my, so my question to you guys: If you guys were talking to, let's just say you guys came to a flag football camp, we held, let's say we host a, a flag football camp, what would you guys tell like some of the kids um, that were interested in playing flag football and why they should play? I, I would definitely say they should join and play. Like, not e- even if they play like uh, tackle or midget or whatever, but even if they don't, if they're older and they still, but I would say just to play that. And get exposure. It's about relationships and who you know. Absolutely. It's definitely a cool environment for people to get along and have fun. And it tells you the fundamentals of football, mm-hmm. like just basically like footwork, speed, agility, uh, hand-eye coordination. It's, it's basically all the fundamentals of football. So joining that and being able to not play at, as physical as you want, but mm-hmm. still having the the chance to learn fundamentals is I think that's very important. And I think that's what helped me. Transition in the uh, in the uh, in the high school. I I wasn't doing no tackle. I was I was just doing flag, and it definitely helped with fundamentals and stuff. Uh, and it saved my body a lot. Like I can still this day, I have no broken bones in my body. Wow. I have like little minor injury, injuries, but nothing really severe. So awesome. I think it's it's very helpful. Awesome. That's gonna be a clip right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be a clip. All right. I, I guess we go uh, present the same question to you, Gabe. Yeah. Uh, for me, I would say just like the skill of football it's real easy to make someone miss when you're in pads and they mm-hmm. gotta bring you down but mm-hmm. trying to duke someone and get past yeah. someone with just a flag it's it's something that not too many people can do uh, sure. extremely well so just that and then especially for quarterback just trying to fit a ball in a lot smaller windows mm-hmm. because it's five on five and not everyone chooses a blitzer sometimes so you got five guys covering four guys and pretty small area so you got to be smart with your decision making and it really just helps you with that like understand the knowledge aspect of football for sure good question good good answer yeah now um if y'all don't know we do have our annual honor ceremony that we do every year and uh these two gentlemen have awards and uh, named after them so so my question is how how does it feel to have an award named after you and like, where where were you when you first found out and just tell me your thoughts uh, so having an award, I didn't find out so I had to pre- I had to go present at the award ceremony. So it was very surprising, and it it, it just it's a blessing because it's it's nice to have some name after you or at least something in your life that you can look back on and be success- successful in and be happy about. For sure. So I think it just shows all your accomplishment that you had, and it it's definitely a it's, it's a good experience it's, it's a good feeling to come back have something to come back to each okay. year and look forward to Absolutely. and see the people like that helped you out when you was younger for that's, sure i'm big on relationships so no doubt. i think that's why i'm big on if anybody helps me out, i'll be sure to be out help them out in the future so love that i, th- I think it's it's a it's, it's a good experience to look back on no and doubt. have something to look forward to uh-huh. so. yeah so i was uh i was up at school and i got a text from you coop asking me to come back <laughs> And I was I was pretty excited. I mean, like he said, that's an awesome thing to have something named after you. Uh, you know, so I think it's an awesome thing because it gets me and all the other alumni get, uh, coming back to the banquet every year, just trying to continue something that uh, we kind of really started with the elite and just really expanded on for mm-hmm. NFL flag. Uh, just seeing all the new faces and all the new talent, it's awesome just to see what they're going to do in the future. And honestly, it gives me something to look forward to every year uh december january oh nice nice all right fellas so playing flag football you guys played in uh the league for a couple years now and again it was a, it was an honor to to see and watch you guys you know blossom and grow and i know i just that the fact that we named an award after you i just thought that was that was the greatest the greatest th- the thing and what would you say would be the biggest transition from when you finally like say, okay, I'm done with my flag football season now. It's time to put the pads on. Like, what do you feel like was the biggest transition for you guys? Uh, biggest transition for me, I knew I had the speed, agility, and strength. I, I think I did, did need to be a little bit more physical. So, like outside of like the flag season, I would do my workouts with my dad, or I would go to UPMC Center. Uh, I had Lauren as my <laughs> as my uh, trainer there, and it was, I was probably she's been my trainer up as, up until high school. And then she had to leave for better, and bigger, and better things. Gotcha. But I would say throughout my league league at uh, the flag league, like 
it was a struggle. I would say it was a big, big journey. That's why I appreciate it so much because I came in in the six and nine year old division mm -hmm. and didn't have no, much success like when I first started. And then we transitioned to the Buckeyes mm -hmm. and won my championship my last year there. <laughs> then I get up to get up into the older division and man, it was tough. Yeah. I mean, I was still balling, but it was tough. Didn't have much success in the early career. Mm -hmm. Then last year, uh, in, the, in the ten, the older division, mm -hmm. I won my championship, and then we had the uh, the travel team. That was a great experience. I I loved it so much. And the last, I think last year we went, we almost made it to the to the Pro Bowl. To Absolutely. Play. So that was to be able to play the whole day and keep winning. Yeah. I was I was like, and go up against the top notch top competition all over. For sure. That was a big experience. But for that, the transition in the high school, I think the biggest thing was. I had to get more physical. Um, I didn't. I know I wanted to play offense. Mm -hmm. I know I wanted to play receiver, but defense. Uh, I was hesitant on playing linebacker or not, but I ended up playing also linebacker. But okay. the biggest thing from from NFL flag to uh, to high school is just being more physical. Just be stay true to what you learn in flag fundamentals and stuff. It's the it's going to be heightened for sure. It's, it's tackle, but just having the fundamentals and being able to transfer transforming the high school I think I think you I need to be more physical I did need to get faster be more because you have a helmet on mm -hmm. you got shoulder pads it's definitely heavier than no just doubt. having like a just a jersey on For so sure. just having everything's heightened to an extent so I think that's what I needed to work okay. on going in high school okay so. yeah so uh for me I would say flag taught me a lot about improvising and just going with it especially mm -hmm. a quarterback with the blitzer, you gotta make a play, and you gotta know your pocket awareness and be prepared for that. So I think I was very well prepared for that going into high school. Just trying to see the deep, uh, see like blitzing linebackers, D line coming at you without really focusing, keeping your eyes downfield. Mm -hmm. But with that, uh, a, a real football field is a lot bigger, <laughs> so you gotta be able to see uh, the big picture a whole lot more. With safeties rolling down, safeties blitzing, dropping back to see if it's cover two, cover mm -hmm. three. And then also with that, I would say just your, like, actual reads. Yeah, in flag, we had, like, a couple little read plays, but in, in high school it really develops to, hey, you got to read safety. If he drops back, don't throw the post. Now you're mm -hmm. reading linebacker to see if he jumps the curler mm -hmm. shallow. So uh, just having the basis of being able to improvise, though, in flag, I think set up my career extremely well and allowed me to be more of a dual threat quarterback in high school. Gotcha. Let me let me kind of piggyback off of, off of that. Okay. Um just cuz I I think I came up with another question. Just like if like you now, what would you tell maybe your younger self um if you could go back and just say, "Hey, about flag football, like what would you say like, "Hey, you should do something differently or maybe you should be able to tell yourself to do this instead of that." Like what would you be able to tell yourself knowing what you know now to maybe either teach yourself to be better or like I would say I would say watch more film okay. and, and and learn about learn about coverages. Okay. More. I I would say that's one thing I had to to work on is watching film and learning the coverages as a as a receiver, being able to know what coverage is in and how to maneuver routes. Gotcha. Because I I was running back, I was still receiver, but I was running back mm -hmm. in flag, and I always I was training. I knew I was going to be my last year, so I wanted to train a receiver because I know it's wanted to do in the future. Gotcha. But yeah, being able to I would say watch film on not even just NFL guys, just college players. Okay. Uh, being able to watch film and know what coverage I would say. Uh, I was, I would, I would just have a lot more football IQ. No doubt. Yeah, for sure. I, I would say that. Okay. And I, I wish I would have, like, shout out D Brown, but I wish I would have joined D Brown <laughs> around that time, because he he's a big help and he's a big help in our like community and with uh, how he trains guys and gets some exposure and stuff. I wish I would have played seven on seven for him too. For sure. Earlier on. For sure. Cause that would have definitely seven oh seven definitely teaches you like as quarterback or receiver or running back mm -hmm. or even defensive players like what coverage you need to run. Right. It's definitely intense, like intense environment mm -hmm. chatter. Like it puts you in those hostile environments. Absolutely. So you, like if you're under pressure, you know how to perform. Absolutely. So, I couldn't agree with that more. I, that's something I wish I would look back on and told myself like make no sure doubt. you keep like heighten your training and For stuff sure. and go out more and. 
ex- observe like how you can succeed more and work harder so that's a great so answer that's yeah i agree with that i mean i had a chance to uh go to a couple of those practices with with d brown uh and it was it was a great experience ultimately i just like they gave me a offer to like play on the team but i decided like i need to focus on high school football and mm-hmm. Yeah, it was good for my team as a mm-hmm. whole, but for my own like personal development and recruiting, it definitely would have been better to play uh, play seven on seven there. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's just the next step mm-hmm. progression from flag to seven on seven to uh, high school. So if you're struggling like going into uh, high school in that tackle environment, seven on seven is like more of a stepping stone that allows you to get more comfortable with the bigger field, with the mm-hmm. faster players, with seeing the coverages, without that added element of pressure and a whole like offensive line run game in front of you i love that man another plug <laughs> another plug but, but i'm going back to you gabe for a second because you talked about your quarterback play for flag and but you don't play quarterback in college right so you play defense right yeah so i play uh corner our team is all single uh single high okay man okay with so i'm a lot one-on-one outside over the top uh it was real weird experience because and and, and flag, I played safety. I won uh, defensive back my mm. senior year. I had more pick sixes than anyone else had picks <laughs> in the league. It's whatever. But, uh, but in high school, I didn't really practice defense. I mean, I practiced with the safeties, but I never had any in-game experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just my speed and my athletic ability gave me an opportunity to go play defense. So the biggest thing there was just learning how to react to uh, an offensive guy. I was so used to like making the move but now it's oh what are they going to do mm-hmm. but I really found a lot of success in just uh, trusting my coaches trusting the defense as a whole and ultimately just getting in and watching film like he said earlier just being prepared studying the receivers of the opposite team you're gonna say all right they're gonna stem out here but I know they're ultimately going to come in mm-hmm. and then like knowing the other team's route combos has really just allowed me to uh succeed there nice so if you could talk to some younger athletes what would if they want to inspire them if they want to aspire to be a college football player what would you what would you say to them um uh, it's complicated it's definitely i would say like i would say up until like when you're getting recruited i would say trust yourself don't make other don't don't let other people make your decision on where you want to go uh i know when i was playing in my senior year COVID really messed up everyone's Mm -hmm. uh, scholarships or where they wanted to go or looks and I didn't get the results I wanted because of COVID and I was a little down on myself but and I didn't know which way I wanted to go but I picked Shippensburg but if I was younger if if I was to talk to a younger person I would say just stay true to yourself or where you want to go and trust your gut and like don't go don't go for a coach that's what I would say. Don't go for a coach. Mm. Don't go for – just go for the, the school. Go for the culture there. Go for, like, what makes you happy, like, as the, as the college itself, as the football program. Don't go for a coach. Because coaches leave and go different places. Then that's what happened to me. Like, I was telling Coop and Rashad that mm. I, I I visited Shippensburg. That was my last – place i wanted to go my dad was like let's just go because we didn't know what shimmersburg was mm-hmm. went there it was I, the campus was amazing i liked the football program the equipment and everything and i was like yeah it was between iup and that okay and i would pick i picked shimmersburg and uh, i would say i signed the paper signing day told told my oc that that was the one who recruited me that i was going to commit there a week later he left wow so <laughs> wow. i was telling Crazy. him he left had to go in with new officer care, officer coordinator and know nothing about me. Went in there, I balled out. But I would say, stay true to yourself. Don't go for the coach. Go for to a program that you you see yourself succeeding in. And see, obviously, you're going for a coach that you want to see them put their all into you as coaches and see you develop as a player. I would say, look for that too. But and then in college, just it's so it's it's you gotta stay on top of it. Like. Sure. They're gonna put you in a position where you can't take breaks. You gotta. They're gonna get push you to get the best mm-hmm. out of you, the the workload. And luckily, I went I went to a college prep school, Central Catholic, where I, I've been through all that, so For I sure. know how to maneuver going into uh, college football. So I would say it wasn't really a difference. I was still prepared for what was coming mm-hmm. in college, but 
yeah, you just got to stay on top of it, and you never know who's coming in, who's leaving, mm. as coaches and players. But as players, especially, you you never know who's coming in, so you always got to stay on top of it because you could get replaced. Mm. You're replaceable at the end of the day. Gotcha. So just stay on top of it. And mm -hmm. get, get with your coaches, watch film, learn, learn, develop as a player. You don't know it all. For like, sure. Coach has been there forever, so being able to be coachable is an uh, important thing. It's key. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Luckily for me, I was able to be recruited at all three levels, uh, and it really gave me an opportunity to really evaluate what I wanted, and I think that's the biggest thing, to just understand what you want in a school, what you want in a program as a whole. So uh, I ultimately chose D3, which kind of stinks because you don't get any uh, aid for school, mm -hmm. but ultimately, yeah, you get no aid. Uh -huh. So uh, ultimately, you uh, I chose there because the opportunity to do uh, two sports as well as I went to other schools, and the biggest thing for me was I wanted to play now. I didn't want to spend gotcha. forever at college. Gotcha. Yeah, so, yeah. like, Butler talked to me. They said, oh, you can redshirt safety. Same with uh, Mercyhurst. But then I went to Grove City, and they, were, they said, hey, look, our corner spot is completely open. It's going to be an open competition. So the best person is going to be on the field. And ultimately, uh, that was me. But just knowing that I wanted to play instantly – and then just choosing a place where you feel like, all right, my education is going to be put first. So down the road in life, I'm going to be prepared. I'm going to get a good job coming right out of school as well as, hey, I can be with this team. It's not going to be, oh, I go to football practice. I go back to my dorm room and I'm not going to hang out with them. It's going to be, hey, I go there, then I'm ruined with a football player mm -hmm. and we're going to eat and, oh, it's all football players. So I can sit down anywhere in the dining hall I want. And then, oh, you're a football player at D3 school. Well, now you're a big man on campus. You make up <laughs> about like five to eight percent of your campus, and you're making a huge run. And teachers are congratulating you. Teachers gotcha. are emailing you after games, like, "Oh, that's awesome." Okay. Just being able to go somewhere where you feel is a good fit, and even though it's D three and you're not going to get any money, I would absolutely look into it because it's it's a great education to a For lot sure. of other schools that offered me to play like at the D two level. And I just felt like it was a much better fit for me. Gotcha, gotcha. Great answer, great answer. Mm -hmm. All right, so you guys were, like, very successful um, at flag football, um, very successful both in, in high school. What was the moment that you guys, like, came to to say, okay, I know I could play college football? Like, was it when you were younger or was it, like, when you were in high school? Like, what was that moment, like, that aha moment, like, yo, I'm going to college to play football? Um, I, would, I would say – I didn't really know about I didn't really know like when I, like I wanted to play college football. I always wanted to when I was younger. Like I I, I heard of the Oregons and Ohio State <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's and I would watch it on TV when I was younger. I'd be like, yeah, I want to be there one day. Mm -hmm. But being younger, I didn't really know like the like I didn't I didn't have a clear vision of how to get there right. when I was younger. I just saw the the stadium and people in pads and I was like, yeah, that's one that's cool. Mm -hmm. But like Going into high school, I would say my junior year is when it really kicked in. Mm. Like, and I think that, I think you should. I, what I would tell younger people is like, I would be more obs observant of how fast like football is, mm. and be prepared like to make a decision of what you want to do for college. I mean, you're young and you have time, but right. you really don't at the right. same time because it flows by so quick. So, and that's that's how fast high school went. I'm looking back now, like wow, I, like that was too fast right. but and I didn't think really take college football serious or recruitment till my junior year and the sophomore year that's when letters come in mm -hmm. people you get notoriety from colleges you get noticed and you go on visits camps and mm -hmm. all that that that's that's your junior year that's when most people go but I would say be more in tune like to like what you want to do like first college wise and I would say that yeah but okay I forgot what you said again. I was just saying, what but was the actual moment? The moment. Like, what happened? Like, what was that? Like, yo, I'm going to college to play football. Like, I would say my uh, my junior year, like I said again, like my junior year, that's when I really was deciding, like, I want to go to college. Gotcha. I had my goals and aspirations. I wanted D1. And I, if COVID didn't happen, I was mm -hmm. going to D1. Gotcha, gotcha. Because gotcha. that, we are short, our season was shortened down our sure. senior year. And we would play six games our regular season, and then we went to playoffs. And then we won our championship, and then we were going to state to go play. I forget who it was. We were going to state playoffs. 
COVID hit, we had to shut our season down. Yeah. But if we had a full season, D one was definitely gonna happen because right, sure. the training and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I would say my junior year, going on visits, going on camps, and going to the camps and performing, and the coaches were impressed with what I was seeing. I had definitely. I, kn- I didn't know where I wanted to go, uh-huh. but I definitely had. Op- I was like, I'm good enough to play college football. I'm definitely good enough going to D Brown and mm-hmm. training and getting getting exposure there and going against the top. Like when you go to the positionals on Thursdays with D Brown, you're getting the best of best for sure. And it don't matter if you're city league. It don't matter mm-hmm. if you're one A, two A, three A, four A, five A, six A. It don't matter. It's the best of the best coming there to compete. Sure. So and you, you like going against older guys like. That's when I say, if you're younger, you go against people that are better than you. Mm-hmm. Go against Absolutely. people that are going to make you agree better. That more. So I was going against people that are like I lost reps. Like it's going to happen, but it's how you respond and no bounce doubt. back. So no doubt, I would say that's being able to perform and go against top notch competition and and succeed. I would say that's when I knew I wanted to play college football. Love it. Yeah. Uh, before I answer the question, one thing to say, uh, what he said. So I didn't start going to camps until the summer before my senior year, and it really hurt because I was going to camps and I was I was blowing it up. And coach was like, "Oh, like that's awesome! You're you're the best kid here right now." But they're like, "We already have a guy." I'm sorry. Uh. So it really limited my opportunity. So even though I didn't start until my junior year, even going to camps like I know a big one is the pit one uh, locally. Yeah, you're gonna think, "Oh, I don't even play. Why should I even go?" It's worth it because you're getting your name out there. And not only are you putting film out there for yourself, but if you get, start getting success and other coaches start talking to your coach, they're going to start second guessing like, hey, is this really like, is this really, should this guy be starting? Mm-hmm. And it makes you really real reevaluate it. So I would get into camps and stuff as soon as you could, because if you wait, it's going to really limit your mm-hmm. chances, especially at bigger schools. Mm-hmm. I would add to him, like going to camps, like it's not just pit camp. You got other colleges that are there too, yeah. mm-hmm. so you're getting recruited not just by Pitt. You're getting recruited by other people that are there. So camps are very helpful. And one thing I didn't, I didn't have the best relationship with my coaches at Central. And looking back, like, like going to camps, I f- it might have felt like a waste of time because mm-hmm. of that relationship mm-hmm. with them. Mm-hmm. But it just, just being at the camp and competing, for like sure. that's enough. No that doubt. was enough for me. Like knowing that I can do it. And it don't matter where I go in the future. I just know I can be able to beat the guy across from me. I love that. But, I love that. Yeah. So, so Gabe, so Eric knew when he was a junior, mm-hmm. when he was he went, college football was for him. When did you decide, yeah, I'm going to take that leap to college football? Yeah, so the first the first like little moment of it was when we were practicing uh, with the elite. It was a bunch of... Four, uh, 13, 14 year olds playing against like 26 year old men <laughs> <laughs> and we we went in there and we absolutely smoked them like it, was, it wasn't it was even a competition and when I say like 26 year old men these, these guys were dudes yeah. like they were out there, they were athletes and they were just they were trying to stop us but they couldn't so like at that moment I was like alright if I can compete with these guys now what am I going to be able wow. to do in a couple more years so a little more, uh, a little bit more down the road I didn't start my first game at quarterback my junior year, but we were down uh, 24 nothing against a team who we hadn't lost to in 10 years. And so the coach finally uh, made the decision to put me in, and in a half of football, I ended up throwing for 125 yards, rushing for 100 yards with two rushing touchdowns, two passing touchdowns, and we ended up losing 42-49. And from that moment on, like I was playing against D1 defensive backs, and I'm like, from that moment it was like, all right, I, I'm a, I'm able to hang with these dudes, right. so that's really what put me on the path to play. Gotcha, gotcha, nice. Wow. So, what was what was the biggest transition that you had to make from high school to college? Um, um, biggest transition, I would say, football IQ. It never stays the same. It definitely increases. It, uh, it just knowing more. It definitely increases going from high school to college. Mm-hmm. Uh, college, high school to college. I knew I had to stay on top of my training. I knew I had to keep being consistent. I knew I had to go even more so. I, like I said, I would go to D Brown, but and then going to going into uh, college, m- like meetings, like and I used a lot of meetings, mm-hmm. a lot of film, a lot of it's a lot. It's like a program. Like you got to be here. Like if the whole day's planned out. That's when camp like camp starts. It's all planned out. 
so it's putting you in an uncomfortable situation like camp in high school is different from camp in college mm. like so you gotta you're in a new environment you gotta transition you gotta be able to understand like what's going on so being able to be in a program that helps you like a full day workload that was tough mm. i'm not used to waking up at 6 a.m well 5 a.m to start the day and you got your whole day planned out and by that you got to be in bed by like eight nine mm -hmm. o'clock and do it all again and again so it's two weeks of that so being able being able to adapt to that is tough i would say but you got to transition to it you eventually you're going to get used to it weightlifting programs tough uh it's different than high school right. a lot more a lot more uh coaching involved like knowing what like how to properly do stuff so I would just say being able to be coachable and being able to just listen to your coaches and and understand what's going on I would say that's the biggest transition from high school to college gotcha yeah, yeah for me uh I would say in high school every team had those like maybe one to two three to four players who were like who were good mm -hmm. in in college everyone's good because mm -hmm. you take those three to four players and now they're making up a whole team. Mm. So, uh, especially in our conference, it's top heavy. So there's five good teams, five bad teams. I had the chance to, or our receiver who played my um, freshman through sophomore year, he was he almost got drafted out of D3. Mm. So like covering him every day in uh, practice just made me that much better. And you, so you're gonna see competition that's equal, if not way better than you. Mm -hmm. And you can't get scared of that whenever the opportunity presents itself you got to go in and take advantage of it because look you might be on scout team or whatever but ultimately the way you play against that all-american is going to determine if you play on saturdays or not you know, i would add to that like going into college and playing scout like it's not what i wanted to do because i knew i like my talent i was able to show what i was going to be able to do and the coach even told me like like you're young I wasn't expecting you to pick up this stuff right away like this, and I'm impressed with what I'm saying, but I want to save you for another year, so he redshirted me. Uh, so I played in that scrimmage. I did real well, and everybody was telling me, like, yeah, you're hyping my head up. Like, you should start. Mm -hmm. Like, you're you're that guy. Then go to the next practice. We to practice for the game, first game of the season. I get told I'm going on scout, and I was hot. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, when I'm mad, like I told you, like, I, you can see it on my face. Like, sure. I don't say nothing. So I'm just looking dead in his soul. I'm, like, just staring at him in the huddle. And then he pulled me aside, and he was talking. And he told me, like, save you for another year. You're young. You're only 18. Like, I wasn't expecting you to pick up this stuff right away. But, right. like, scout, going against the, the starting, like, the, the starting defense mm -hmm. and your own offense it gets the best out of you too For like sure. it's preparing as it should so i was down there killing the number one <laughs> and i would make sure that the coaches on defense would yes. tell the offense like so maybe i, I was hoping in my head eventually i would get mm -hmm. put For sure. but it didn't happen but just to be able to have the defensive coaches say yeah that, you're that good and i'm gonna let the offensive coordinator know like what you're doing to them down there and it's all film too mm -hmm. so Absolutely. i have a whole bunch of film of me going against the number one defense on our on our team and just cooking them. So, like being able to be on scout, I would say that's another thing I had to be prepared for. I was, I had to, I was always scout at Central, but not as much as I was in high school. So, mm -hmm. I think, I mean, not as much as I was my freshman year in college. So, I would say, yeah, that that was the biggest transition because yeah, I knew true. I knew like doing the the off season like. I had a I had my mind made and my dad like another thing my dad was like don't expect to go in there and start right, right away right, like you're sure. going to register I was wasn't hearing them nah. I was like no nah, I'm I'm working out every for day sure. I'm not taking a break I'm eating right like I'm going to play and then to hear that like you're going on scout uh, it made me mad <laughs> but yeah another thing with that is like in in high school you're going to have your off season workouts uh you're going to have all that time to learn the offense learn the defense learn the scheme or whatever in college, at least for me, it wasn't that way. It was, hey, this is camp. You're expected to know it. Mm. Because in D3, you're not allowed to talk to your coaches until camp. Wow. So we they were sending us a huddle playbook out, and we could read it, and we could watch film. But you weren't prepared for that first week of camp. Oh, it was okay. you're thrown into <laughs> it. Like, they're expecting you to do drills full speed. And, look, you either catch on quick, yeah. and, like, you accept that you're going to mess up, or you can sit there and – why and like oh I'm not, I'm not playing because I don't know what I'm doing if I only had more time no it everyone has the same amount of time as you so you gotta get mm -hmm. out there right then also just the amount of film that's available 
to you. It's ridiculous. In high school, we might have been able to – we watched game film, and that's about it. In college, everything you do is filmed. It doesn't matter if it's drills, one-on-ones, a seven-on-seven period, team period, special teams period. Everything is filmed, and at least my, my uh, school, everyone's getting notes. Like, it doesn't matter if you're fourth-string corner playing – against the starting receiver you're getting notes and it's like hey this is how you need to improve okay just to, i think that's just a big thing just being prepared for that much more responsibility and that much more available to you so you just need to take advantage of it awesome i love that man I, i'm already seeing this is gonna be a great episode <laughs> like i can already see it um so so yeah my next question is your whole football journey um, what was one of, or not one of, what was the biggest obstacle that you kind of overcame, no matter where it was? What do you feel like, you know, in your football career, what was the biggest obstacle that you overcame? Um, biggest obstacle, I, I had many, but the biggest one was being, like having a relationship with my coaches. Mm. Um, I always thought, like, I'm not the biggest talker. I'm not the, I like a raw rock type of guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so being able to, like, I, I would say I need to be more vocal. I do say I need to look back. I need to be more vocal, communicate with my coaches more. But in my head when I was younger, I would think, like, I don't need to say much. Like, my actions are showing it. Mm-hmm. For sure. So, but that didn't happen. So, so I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm like, I'm not talking. I'm just, I'm a worker. Like, I'm not about to sit here and talk to you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to just show you what I can do. So, but the coaches can take that the wrong way. Like, oh, he don't talk. He's not. In the he's not all in in the program. Mm-hmm. He don't he don't care about it. That's not the case. But I would say I need like even if that's you when you're younger, you're gonna have to be more vocal. Get out your comfort zone and no talk. Doubt. I'm still working on that mm-hmm. to this day. Like gotcha. I, I I'm definitely more vocal than I was. Not as much, but it's definitely improving. But yeah, I would just say I need to be more vocal and have a relationship with my coaches because coaches can take that the wrong way. Mm. And I think that's what got me in high school is me not being able to talk and. It hurt a little bit with the coaching, but, yeah, that's the biggest thing I had. So, Yeah, for me, I would say during the recruiting process, I, di- I didn't do too much. I was hoping, like, oh, I put my film out on Twitter. Uh, hopefully people see me. And, yeah, you get a little bit of, like, a uh, little bit of responses, but just being – like, I didn't want to put, put myself out there because I, I don't want I don't want to seem like, oh, I'm bragging. Oh, look how good mm-hmm. I am. Like, I don't, I don't feel good about that. But <laughs> – if you want to get recruited, you got to promote yourself. You got to do it in sure. a way where you, you're not too arrogant and you're not, oh, look at me, look at me. But you need to do it in a way like, hey, I'm good. This is my skill set. This is why you need to have me. Mm. So my my biggest attribute was the, my ability to scramble. Okay. And because I was only 155 pounds in high school. <laughs> and, like, I was running dudes over. So, like, <laughs> if I would have put on more weight and said, hey, that was my weakness, but mm-hmm. it's not my weakness anymore, mm-hmm. and I would have made that jump from junior to senior year, it would have helped a lot of concerns that colleges had about recruiting me. So just being aware of what your strengths are, like putting those out there and just finding out what your weaknesses are and working on those to mitigate them. Gotcha. Great. Before I get to my next question, uh, Gabe, I also, I also know you do special teams. And people don't talk about special teams a lot when it comes to football. It's just offense, defense, but special teams is important. And you're, you've had accolades in that. So talk a little bit about your special teams, what you do for them and – yeah, so uh, in high school, I was recruited to a lot of schools as an athlete. So it was more like, hey, we don't know where we're going to put you, but we think you're a good athlete, so we're going to put you on the team. So that doesn't mean it could be slot, it could be corner, but we want you to return kicks. So going into uh, like the first camp, the head coach and special teams coordinator came up to me and was like, hey, have you guys have you caught kicks before? I said, yeah, absolutely. I've never <laughs> never did it before. <laughs> never did it before. <laughs> so I I got in with the punter and I went after practice and started catching punts and stuff to prepare myself. And luckily, I was able to start the first game as kicker turner, punter mm. turner. So with that, uh, it's really like we have vision statements for every uh, like every level. So offense, defense, special teams. So the defense is to establish and change the. The special teams is to establish and change field position. So I know my job as a kick returner isn't to score a touchdown every play. Yeah, you're mm-hmm. going to have those opportunities. But my job is to get the offense the ball, number one, and number two, flip the field if I can, and put them in the best possible position. Mm. So with that, it, it's immense what you're able to do as a program. This year, our kick return unit was top ten in the nation for 
kick return average, and that's not just me at returner. Right. That's all all other all ten guys up there blocking. It's the scheme. It's knowing. All right, we're playing a team that likes to overload the field side, so let's go boundary. Mm. So it's so much more. And if you feel as though, oh, I'm not getting the looks on offense or defense that I want, especially in college, you're gonna have a chance to get on special teams, and you can really show how like how willing you are and how fast you're able to play on special teams, and that will open up other opportunities mm. to get you on the field. I love that. So, you just mentioned the word team, and I want to talk about team, and football is the ultimate team sport. So how would you, like, say your team dynamics in flag football translate over to what they are now in college? Uh, we'll, Gabe, we'll start with you. Yeah, so uh, in flag, I had the opportunity to play with my brother. My dad was my coach. That's awesome. And then uh, – my, I would say my two closest friends at the time were also on my team, Dom and Josh. Mm-hmm. And it it wasn't like, oh, we're going to play football and then we're going uh, see you next Saturday. It was, hey, we, we're going to watch the game at your house tomorrow. Okay, I'll spend the night. Oh, you're doing something for Memorial Day? Okay, yeah. I uh, love that. You come over too. Yeah. So with that, that really grew. Then in high school, I was able to make like a core group of friends. And I was luckily able to room with one of them at Grove okay. City and okay. continue to play football. So just being able to go in and be willing to make friendships because you don't know how that's going to be. Mm-hmm. Like especially in college where you don't you're all your time is consumed by football and school. It finds it seems hard to actually go out there and just uh you know what we're going to chill tonight and we're going to we're just going to sit down and watch a game. No doubt. So just being able to have that as a team and be extremely close with your teammates is something that I see the teams that are right on the verge of like peaking they just don't have it's mm-hmm. all individuals rather than a team that's collectively one unit uh, i would say coming in the league i was new i was lone lonesome so i didn't really know anybody besides i was just i don't even know how my dad found about it i i told him <laughs> i wanted to play football and he put me in this so i was like I, I came into it i didn't really know nobody but being around like a good culture and good environment mm-hmm. You're gonna eventually meet people that you care about and it, it sure. build relationships with. So I was able to build relationships with, with a lot of people in the younger division and then not, not even just on my team but other teams. And that that's what I say is good about the league. Like you're not just good with your team. Like there's other players and coaches on other teams yeah. that you ever and it makes it more competitive For too. Sure. So I would say that that was a good good uh, environment when in the six and nine year old division and then going up into the older league it's the same thing like mm-hmm. you you understand more you understand what the league's all about and it's be, it's basically the best of the best again and just being able to like have a relationships like you might go to the same school as somebody on mm-hmm. your team or somebody on the other team you might go to the same school outside of football and having a relationship outside of football is big and big and important right. so like when you come to the league like the chemistry is off the chain no so doubt. I would say being able to just be open and like have a diverse group of people and div- and diverse group of coaches like being able to come together and compete and then after you're done competing you'd be like oh you want to go get something to eat or or y'all want to go hit a movie or something mm-hmm. like us uh, it's being important so having off the field relationships and on the field relationships is was very important in the, in the league. I would no say. doubt. So, and I'm sure that's happening in college too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Play, yeah. It's it's in football. It's, it's in football. Having you got to build relationships. For sure. You got to have team like team chemistry uh, throughout high school and college because the 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 best cultures do that stuff. Like mm-hmm. they they have off the field relationships. Like mm-hmm. it's not just football because y'all can come in and say I like do you really have my back at the end of the day for sure it's bigger than like we're here right now I know you got me but I know you got me even more if we, we are outside of football so yeah. I would say yeah uh-huh. it's in high school it's in college and like if you don't have that like you're not gonna win championships no I, doubt. It's, it's, it's all about culture at the no end doubt. of the day so uh-huh. Um, so we almost wrapping up. We only got like a couple more questions. So I, I think one thing that we don't really focus on a, a lot is the fact that like you're a student, like in college, you're a student. So what is like the, the, the man of being a student and playing football? Like, how did you guys balance that from doing both? Yeah. So, uh, Grove city is pretty good academic, uh, school. So it's, no matter what you like, what you do on campus, it's you're a student first. And I think 
Uh, just having that approach is really good uh, for the campus as a whole because it makes sure people aren't hyper-focused on just doing one thing. So I would say the biggest difficulty of that is you're going to have a ton of free time. Mm. A typical workload for me was five classes, so that's about, I don't know, 15 hours a week yeah. worth of classes. Then film starts at 3.30, you're done at 6.30. But what are you going to do during the day if you're, cl if you're done at class at 11? Mm -hmm. Like, are you going to sit there? Are you going to play video games? Are you just going to hang around? Are you going to nap? Or are you going to try and do schoolwork? For me, I, I didn't do much work during the day because I found as though I was the most productive, like, at night after practice. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would go, I would shower, I would eat, then I would go study, get my work done that I had to. And then around 10, 11 o'clock, that's when... I really settled down for the night okay but I, that's how i operate that's how like i knew how i worked best so gotcha. just understanding what's going to put you in the best place to succeed mm -hmm. is really important i think gotcha yeah i'll, I'll piggyback off him what it gave what he said like if the college you have a lot more free time like if you choose not to do your work it's on you right, like, right. You, get, you don't got nobody uh, like telling you like you have to do this you, right. it's all of you so going into college like as a student and doing football, it's tough. Like, cause you're you're putting all this physical and mental effort into football, and then you got to turn around and do an essay. Like, mm -hmm. you don't know, like it's tough. Like, you gotta find you gotta use your time wisely. Time management is really important in college. So like, like six a.m. I was I'm gonna go in season. Like six a.m. We would have we probably have film six to seven. Then it depends on how you pick your classes. So I'll probably have I pick my classes wisely now. Like I'll go, <laughs> I go right back to sleep. Like mm -hmm. I'm not about to stay up, but I'll go back to sleep and say I got a, a ten o'clock class or eleven o'clock class. Have that, and I'm, I'm gonna say this year I had after film I had uh, I had a ten o'clock class. I would take take go back to sleep, wake up, go to that class, and I would have one class that day, and I'll be go pack and then take another nap. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll go to practice, practice, and then get something to eat. And then, like he said, he's productive at night after practice. Like, that's the same with me. Like, after practice, I'll do my work. I can't wake up early and do work. But, yeah, like, being a student and having football is, is tough. Being a student at Lee is not, is not for the week. Because right. you got – you got all this time, but you really don't. And if you're not on top of your deadlines of when things are due and being able to study, like you're gonna you're gonna struggle, mm -hmm. and you're gonna be academic ineligible. We have a lot of people. There's a lot really? of people on the team that oh, wow. get academic ineligible when they can't play. And luckily, I I, I was never in that situation at all because okay. yeah you gotta stay on top of it. For and, sure. And if you're not doing what you're doing in, in a classroom, you're not see you're not gonna be on the field. Right. So. Uh, coaches are big on that being able to perform at class for sure. sure but yeah it's tough and then even in the spring spring ball terrible <laughs> do not pick eight o'clock class and you're doing spring ball mm -hmm. you gotta wake up at five o'clock in the morning be at the field by at least well be at the field by at least 5 30 run in agility it's cold it's cold out you gotta wear they the coaches tell us we gotta wear one layer one layer jacket one layer t-shirt one layer pants and cleats be out there sprinting and then after that, if you got an eight, like I had a, my first spring ball, I had an eight o'clock class. So after that, I'm shivering. I'm walking mm. to the class. And then after that, how you have your classes, then you got lift. Oh, wow. Terrible. Okay. So I would say, like, being able to know what you're getting into and be able to pick your schedule wisely For so sure. it's you can manage it uh, is important. So I never I scheduled an eight o'clock class again. <laughs> after that, I went right back to my dorm. In my bed, sleep. Gotcha. No eight o'clock class. No eight o'clock class. Uh, this is great. So, so, so you you guys are able to be productive at night, right? So, what time did we go to sleep? Are we talking like two in the morning? Some, yeah, sometimes for me, yeah. I would say I I tried to be in bed by like midnight because I have a lot of eight o'clock classes, so I'm trying to get that full rest recovery. So if I if I'm at least like getting ready to like chill out by midnight obviously you're gonna have some of those nights where hey i've got an essay due and <laughs> i'm not sleeping tonight sorry it yeah. is what it is and you got to suck it up for that day maybe two days but just trying to get in a routine that's best for you i would say but i would say right around midnight for me yeah i try to i want to enjoy my life a little bit so yeah i'll get my work done but i'll be on tiktok <laughs> so and you like you be on tiktok and <laughs> 
it feel like five minutes and it's really like at two hours <laughs> i'm sitting there i'm like oh i gotta go to bed i gotta get up again at 6 a.m and go to a Man. meeting so it's tough like sometimes you gotta risk it if mm-hmm. you want to enjoy like your life a little bit or be on the game like because you don't get you don't you don't get that for about well including camp about 14 weeks mm. so i would say having having time to sacrifice uh to enjoy yourself a little bit it don't hurt so yeah some nights you won't be going to sleep at like 2 a.m but, okay. but it like looking back like the season was so long like this year we had three weeks of camp instead of two so, mm. and yeah and so when we went up there that was terrible mm. but like now that i'm sitting here now like it was it was a long season mm. but now i'm looking back it went quick mm. so so sacrificing a little bit of your time is it is not going to hurt gotcha so finally looking ahead to the future let's go back to the beginning a little bit and how do you think you can give back to the flag football league that start that you were in that started your career earlier uh, yeah so i would say uh first thing is just staying involved so like uh now that i'm graduating i'm gonna have a lot more free time and be around a lot more I've missed the past couple of alumni games just because I was in season. So the uh, biggest thing for that is just being able to come back and, like, see everyone, I think, mm-hmm. can help promote uh, that those relationships that we talked about earlier, as well as just, like, going to the banquets, like, trying to just stay involved with it because it's so easy to, oh, I got life now. Uh, mm-hmm. Saturdays are my only, only time off, so do I really want to drive 40 minutes for me just to watch them? Some guys I don't really know and maybe <laughs> see some that I do. But I think just being able to invest in the younger guys because ultimately those are the people you're going to be watching grow mm-hmm. up and play high school, college football in the next couple of years. So if you if you can have that relationship with a kid and say, hey, I, 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 I coached that kid mm-hmm, a little bit mm-hmm. and he's playing at Penn State, Ohio State or whatever, like just stuff like that, just be involved and really help promote football as a sport because – I know a lot of teams don't have ninth grade teams anymore oh, because really? mm-hmm. yeah because they're just the numbers are falling because mm-hmm. they're just so worried about injury and stuff. Mm. Yeah, your body's going to go through it, but it's a sense of like accomplishment and pride. You said earlier that it's the ultimate team game. Mm-hmm. It absolutely is. So, just being able to help promote football as a whole and continue especially in Western PA to have good football is just going to make the entire scene that much better. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say being available and I would say look out like be in tune to like who helped you mm. so uh, like I said I'm big on relationships I know all the people that helped me when I was younger I'm gonna make sure I they, they're just still in my mind like, mm-hmm. I wanna be a position where I can help them so be like coaching I always wanted to coach mm-hmm. so coaching and like bringing new ideas to like the, the league like mm-hmm. what can what, what I know help can help uh, players or even coaches that I wanna do I know what like just bringing my ideas to the mm-hmm. table of what can help the league uh, develop into the future and like just being available to coach and like an award ceremony just making yourself available like For sure i think is important For sure and b- being on relationships like don't l- don't let the people who helped you out just be in the past no doubt. like always keep those people in mind and keep them first so i think that's big and important so. Uh-huh. So I, I'm going to wrap this up. Final question, and we're going to get out of here. Uh, of course, I'm going to let Coop send it off. But if you're at your your, your last year, 13U team, the Eagles, your last year, 13U Lions, if you guys met in the championship, who would win and why? I'm saying the Eagles because I'm Eagles all the way. It's just like we had dogs on our team. Like, like we played the Lions before, and we had the same amount of players. <laughs> but – and it was t- it was tough. Like I like I said, I didn't have much success like in the in the early leagues. But that team and uh, the last team was we we had good relationship. We had good schemes and stuff. And we had the East special. Mm. Like nobody was stopping us. <laughs> so it's like it was just there's levels to it. So For like sure. the Eagles that year, I mean, we lost to the Redskins, and that was a fluke. That I'm not even going to talk about that. But like it was just. That team, our, my 13 year, like nobody was beating that team. Like, All right. We had schemes and stuff. All right. So, first off, the East Special started <laughs> when they started pitching the ball back to me nah. to give me the option to run or pass. Nah. Most rushing and passing touchdowns in a single <laughs> season. I mean, but I would say the Lions would definitely win. I mean, just the league as a whole. 
if you look at the best elite team ever, in my opinion, mm-hmm. when we played real guys, <laughs> that was that was my last two years playing. Yeah, he was on the yeah. elite team too, but he was an anomaly. He was the only one <laughs> in his year yeah. who was good enough to play with us. So if you look at my team particularly, I mean, I won QB, MVP, yeah. defensive back, Dom won receiver. <laughs> like, we just had – and we just had better chemistry. You, didn't, you guys didn't have that with the Eagles because you were seen as – a men among boys because <laughs> you were so busy playing with us. <laughs> so I think just the fact that the competition, you were playing a bunch of bums. Uh, <laughs> I mean, lines would win. I mean, I, it all it all comes down to what you do in the off season. So if they wasn't doing what they was doing in the off season, I was. So right. it, it wouldn't matter who. It wouldn't matter who, who lined what, up. Yeah, who lined up or what year it was. Like it was. Gonna, I was gonna dominate regardless. So just that our team, like. I know I was probably I, it was me Carson. No, Carson wasn't on your final year. He was my year. No, I'm talking about uh, the lead team. Oh, oh the lead team. Was, yeah, yeah. I was probably we were the only two Eagles on that team, but mm-hmm. yeah. But my year, I, that 13 U team, I think we would have took it. Right. No way. <laughs> right. Well, that's it. I'm let you wrap that's, it up. Man. Hey, uh, once again, I want to thank our guest today. F- former Phenomenal. elite players, former league all Americans, uh, Gabe Dunlap. Eric Benson, they got awards named after them. Uh, he's the running back of the year award. Gabe's the quarterback of the year award, and well deserved, gentlemen. So thanks for being on with us today. Uh, hope to see you all back in the next month. Uh, again, we're going to go back to tournaments a little bit uh, with Austin, who has that big AFFL tournament coming up in January. So we're going to talk to him, and uh, that's it. You can check us out on our YouTube page, uh, Instagram. Everything like that. By the way, before we go, you guys have some social media that, that people can reach out to you guys at. I sure. mean, I got Instagram, uh, ebj.14 on Instagram. Follow me. Show support. Yeah. Yeah, uh, on Twitter, if you ever need help with quarterback, tra- even track stuff, I'm a decathlete. I know a little bit about a lot of stuff, so I can help uh, at, at gdunlap03. All right. All right well, cool. yeah, that's, that's it from us, NFL Flag Talk. See y'all next time. Take Signing care. off, man. Thanks. This was great. Thank you guys so much, man. No the stories was dope, man. Thanks, man. I showed you bad like Shakira. Uh, I told her look in the mirror. Y'all don't need a license yep. to care.